Yeah. Hello, thanks. Every, thank you to everybody for coming. Um, this is, I forget what number of our BSSJ free lecture series here, but we've been doing these every, almost every month. Um, BSSJ, as most of you know, is a nonprofit organization, Vegetarian Society of South Jersey, and we do sponsor um, events like this. We have potlucks. We're actually showing a movie, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, we do restaurant trips. We do tabling, outreach at different events. And uh, we're, as I said, we're a nonprofit organization. Most of our events are open to the public. You don't have to be a member to join or to come to them, but we do appreciate people signing up for BSSJ because it does support functions such as this. So a couple of the things we have coming up. Next month, the library was taken on the fourth Monday. But we are in the uh, Camden County Library in Voorhees. We're going to be showing the uh, Academy Award winning best feature documentary, The Cove, that is on Thursday, September 17th at 6.30. Our next lecture here is on October 26th, and that is uh, Jim Ranga, who some of you may have seen before. He does a couple talks for us every year. This is Fall into Health. Um, there's also, we have a flyer for AVS has a gala, American Vegan has a gala coming up in September. There's a flyer over there if you're interested in looking. We have some of our literature. We'll pass around a mailing list. If you haven't signed up for our mailing list yet, you can do that. And by the way, donations are tax deductible to the SSJ. Um, so for tonight's speaker, um, Kevin Storm was New Jersey's youngest radio host. He's still a radio host, but he's on temporary hiatus now from radio program. He's also a vegan animal rights activist. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Kevin. Um, well, thank you all for coming. And thank you for Stephen and Lorraine for having me as a speaker. If you can't tell, I'm surely nervous. I've only ever done a public speaking event that was scheduled once before this, and that was in November. And since the show ended in May, I've yet to do almost anything along the lines of a speech that somebody's listened to. So hopefully I don't mess up. Um, but you guys, are here to uh, you guys are here to listen to me talk about doing our part to help animals and people. And uh, I've been doing animal rights and veganism activism since the age of four when I went to one of my first leafleting events. And it was probably for a horse-drawn carriage or a circus in Philly for our friend Marianne, because um, we've been doing events with her for years, almost my, closer to doing my entire life. And I guess we can start off with a basic of who I am. Um, I was born Benjamin Kevin Schindler Clofer, and now I just use Kevin or Kevin Storm, which was the show name for my radio show that I did for about two and a half years. <coughs> And I was born on April 22nd, 2001, which is Earth Day, which I can look back on and realize that it's kind of ironic that I ended up being an animal rights vegan activist. And uh, my mom, Susan Schindler, is here, and she's a professional truck driver. And my dad, Michael Clofer, is here, and he's a cook. And uh, if my mom, my mom was vegan for about two years before I was born, mm -hmm. something around there. Um, so if she hadn't have been, so I have to say thank you to her. If you hadn't have been vegan, I probably wouldn't be here right now or know half of what I know about anything that goes on in factory farms or anything like that. Um, so what am I? I'm a regular kid. I'm 14 years old from Pemberton Township, New Jersey. Uh, I'm in, I started school at age three. I went through uh, grade school, middle school, and I have my first day of high school, September 3rd. And that I'm also just as nervous for. <laughs> and uh, the radio experience that I've gotten because of veganism has affected my life immensely. I've met a huge amount of people, like you guys here. Um, met a lot of famous animal rights vegan activists, like Will Tuttle, Gary Francione, uh, a couple really close friends that we've only met because of the cause that we're a part of, like Camille Marino. Um, who is on NIO, who have actually been featured in their blog a couple times, but I can't remember the website off the top of my head. Negotiation is over .net, but it's down right now. Um, I've been featured on multiple uh, books, such as Animal Hero Kids. I even got a thank you in uh, Dave Lehrman's book called The Most Famous Man You've Never Heard Of, and he's a, a well-known Howard Stern character. 
Uh, I've been on Victoria Moran's Main Street Vegan like twice, I think. Um, I've met Michael Tierson, who we just had lunch with uh, at the pop shop with Doris and her two daughters. And uh, I've been on Bob Linden's Go Vegan Radio twice, as well as he's been on my show twice. Uh, he was my first and my 100th guest. Um, so that was pretty cool that he was willing to do that twice. And also Bruce and Hobbs' podcast. I had him on my show, and not too long ago, after the conference that just passed in D.C., I went on his. So I've been, I've also been in two magazines, The Vegan Lifestyle from Australia and American Vegan Magazine, who Fred and Ann are here with Clint. And uh, they put me in for a whole page as well as a side article. So that was really cool. I felt really special for that. Um, so why I do what I do. Um, I've been, like I said, doing vegan activism and animal rights activism for closer to 10 years now. And I do it because I think it's a good cause. It's for something that hopefully in the long run ends up getting to the point where as few of us as there are now, it's going to be that way for meat eaters. So hopefully I get to see that before I go. Um, <laughs> I'm only 14. It's got a long time for the cause to happen. Um, for as far as what I've done in animal rights, uh, I've done from the smallest things of just explaining to somebody what veganism is, which to me, I know everybody has a different theory of what veganism is. Uh, to me, it's the complete and total abstinence from animal products and byproducts, as well as the total abolition uh, and exploitation, uh, or from exploitation and animal slavery. And I think that if you know anything about veganism, you can teach anyone that knows nothing about it. Uh, even if it's just telling them uh, when you're at the store, if there's a vegan yogurt and they're picking up a dairy yogurt, you can say, oh, have you tried this one? Uh, it doesn't have dairy in it. Or if you're at a pizza place that has daya cheese and you say, oh, you should try your pizza with daya instead. If they do and they like it and they're going to probably look into it more, then you could have made somebody go vegan because of one meal. Um, so I've done stuff as small as that to direct action. I was introduced to direct action first when I went to a Chipotle before they had their vegan option, so Frida, uh, somebody two minutes before I had to go in. I was told it was just a leafleting event, which is what I was used to. <laughs> two minutes before I had to go in there, they handed me a megaphone and a little note card with a speech on it that I had to read when I went in there. <laughs> and they said, here, you're going to go in there and we're going to film you and you're going to say this through a megaphone to the whole uh, establishment. And I was more nervous then than I am now because <laughs> that was towards the beginning of my radio show. So I had almost no experience doing anything like this. And they had the people that were working there behind the counter as well as the manager in our faces telling us to get out, saying they were going to call the cops, which they did, but the cops kind of took our side. So that was really cool. Um, and they recorded it, and the recording... From where the person was, you can see the manager go right in front of me and stands this far from me, uh, telling us that we shouldn't be here, we're not allowed to be here, it's against the law or whatever. And he was kind of wrong. We weren't really doing anything legally incorrect. Um, uh, I've also done uh, hundreds and hundreds of protests um, for circuses, uh, just little events that shouldn't be happening because of uh, wrong morals behind him. We went to even a side type of circus that was at my school, and one of the biggest problems we had with it was that they ended up taking a class of kindergartners without uh, parent permission to the place where this was set up right in the playground area, and this place had been cited for multiple violations, one of which was a lion getting out in the middle of a show, and I think I'm not sure if they attacked somebody, but they definitely got out and destroyed some equipment. And we knew one of the people that lived in our town whose daughter was part of the group that went out there, and they had huge complaints about this, and uh, they were saying something about how it should be a lawsuit against them for taking their kids to this dangerous protest, or this dangerous uh, circus. Um, so, more or less, uh, I'm here talking about how what I do can be done by anybody. I don't know about the whole radio show thing. That was a pretty unique experience. I don't even know why I got it. Um, but it was fun, and unfortunately it's over now. So um, how I do my part, uh, you can, I, like I said, I go from the smallest to 
not the largest, but a very uh, huge type of activism. And it, it's not easy sometimes. Uh, I kind of aspire to be a member of ALF or ARM or Sea Shepherd that actually goes out and directly affects the cause immediately. Sea Shepherd even got a show called Whale Wars. That That's insane to me. Um, and the fact that this movement's grown th that much since I joined it, uh, I don't remember the last time that my mom checked, but I'm pretty sure at one point she researched the percentage of vegans in the U.S., and it was near like 10%, something like that, yeah, which is crazy to think, because uh, there's millions of people in the U.S., so even if there's a fraction of us out there, it's growing. Um, how did I get where I am? All because of my mom. Almost all. And the the station manager at WNJC two and a half years ago. Um, both big helps, but still mostly her. Because like I said, if she hadn't been vegan when I was born, I probably wouldn't be now. Because um, most of the people that I've met through veganism is because I was already a part of it. So thank you. Uh, I'm here because of you. Even if you don't want to take the credit, because I know you're really <laughs> bad at that. Especially, especially during the show. I had to force her to be my co-host. Um, <laughs> So how can you do your part? Um, just you can go from going on Facebook and learning about an event like this, um, but one that has to do with protesting a circus. Uh, there's tons of them in Philly with Mary and Bessie. Uh, you can go, you can do something as small as that, or you can join a direct action group like Arm or Alf or something like that and help them. In which case they break into facilities and rescue uh, prisoned animals, which is really drastic so it might be a bad place to start off with. <laughs> um, but a lot of people are getting into the whole undercover investigation. That's what ARM was. We learned a lot about them this year at the conference. Uh, well, we met them two years ago in L.A. Um, they do undercover investigations where the people go and get hired and have, I don't remember if they said they bring in the, um, the hidden cameras and get footage, um, but they go into these investigations mostly in Florida and uh, they record footage of illegal acts that are going on, and then later on have their team, along with like local authorities, go in there and shut the whole place down. And I thought that that would be like the ultimate goal, to be able to join them and do that, because that is, to me, the most direct way of affecting it. Because um, you're, you're taking a business that is doing the farthest exploitation and being the reason behind it getting shut down. I, I would feel so completely accomplished if I could be the reason behind something like that getting shut down. Um, I can take a little bit of credit for the whole Chipotle vegan option because of that <laughs> protest, but I know I'm a very small fraction of that. Some people did that multiple times. Um, so to me, uh, why is it important for you to do something in animal rights activism? It's important because we started off as a small thing where people didn't even know what veganism was. I just talked to somebody yesterday who ate Gardein and didn't even know that it was a vegan option. Uh, the fact that it's getting so popular that people are buying it and not realizing that it's vegan and then liking it and trying more vegan food, uh, that's insane that it's gotten to that point. As small as it started off with, like I said, people not even knowing what the word meant. Now you can go out to somebody in New York City and say, hey, do you know what vegan is? And they're going to give you their uh, answer for it. Uh, my friend John didn't know what veganism was. Now he knows what it is. He wanted to go vegan after a one animal rights video. Even if it couldn't happen because of the household, he still, like, I felt really good about myself that I got somebody who wanted to go vegan and his brother the next month. Um, so the smallest thing, just like showing somebody a video, can affect their morals in, like, in an immense way. Um, I know probably some of the videos that my mom showed me uh, from stuff like Matrix, who is, uh, which is good for uh, younger kids, like maybe Clint or Maple, uh, to larger stuff like Speciesism, which I still yet to have seen, or Cowspiracy, which my mom and I have been struggling to find a way to watch for two months now. Um, especially documentaries like The Cove, that was a really good one. That was a great, uh, great documentary. And also... Skin Trade, uh, which we saw at Blue Stockings, that and The Cove, which now that I think about it, both of those times when we were there, uh, Mickey Z asked me to do, uh, asked me to stand up and introduce myself, and I was just as nervous now. I'm actually shaking right now, because I'm, <laughs> I'm running out of stuff on my paper, and I don't know what to do now. 
Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I spent two weeks in South Carolina at the beginning of this uh, of my summer vacation in June um, with people that we barely met or barely knew at the beginning of 2013, something, it feels like 2013, um, who now we consider family. Uh, Michael Berenswag of, uh, and no. Marilyn Berenswag, <laughs> Berenswag of Berenswag's, Berenswag Berg San- Bird Sanctuary. Wow, I'm really stumbling now. Um, they have a sanctuary down in South Carolina, a uh, huge property full of chickens, as well as the doves, the guinea pigs, the cats that they have in their house. And we helped them move down there uh, from a homeless camp that we were introduced to by Doris, um, which is now unfortunately shut down. And people like Alex Libman are still in lawsuits with the local affiliates because of him trying to stand up for the cause. Um, We moved them down January January of last year, and uh, they've grown. There's a whole bunch of new chickens there. Some that we brought down, not there yet, or not there still. But uh, moving them down was a really difficult process. We had, in in just our minivan alone, we had three cats, a couple pigeons, three guinea pigs, uh, a squirrel, and a starling, and probably 20, 20 chickens, as well as a huge... Uh, Cochin roosters, I don't remember the name, um, these um, these huge roosters that you'd look like you'd be afraid of them, but I actually picked one up, and it's all fluff. They're probably <laughs> 10 pounds, and they look like they'd be 30. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was nervous when my mom picked one up the first time we went there. I was like, that thing's going to bite you. Because <laughs> our rooster before never pecked anything, but he was like this big. So I was like, if they're that big, they're going to be somewhat violent. One always went after our shoes, no matter what. I guess he thought our shoelaces were a bug or something, but every time you went there, he would chase you around their little fenced off, or not fenced off, roped off area of the camp. And that was really funny, but I think he was one of the ones that passed. I can't remember his name. But they go so into taking care of these animals, and they name each one. And I was there for two weeks, and I probably only learned the name of five out of the 50 chickens that are there. So I was so lost every time I was helping her bring them in or out of their pens. I was like, um, where does this one go? Or where does that one? And I would finally get to one that I knew, and I knew where it went. So I wouldn't have to ask. So I made some progress when I was there. But I, if I go down there again, I'm probably going to forget names. and Because there's going to be a lot of chickens. There was probably... 15 chicks when I was there that are probably going to be full-grown chickens by the time I go down again if we don't go down in December. Um, and I am now completely out of notes, forgetting what to say. <laughs> um, oh, oh, one more thing. Thank you to Doris, because you're the founder of NJ Vegan Families, which was the first group that my mom and I joined. So along with her being vegan before I was born and you founding a group for us to join, I, I'm here now. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, but I guess that's a good idea. We should open up for questions. Um, any? Oh, I, I just wanted to ask if you were talking about the ferns, wives, all the birds, and all the other animals they had. Do they have all of those in Lakewood? Yeah. Uh, yes. Wow. Well, they've and gotten a few since they've been there. Somebody dropped off seven roasters like two weeks ago. Oh, they ago. have. I they have a. Ten City wow. had anything uh, on the Yeah. There and there's a lines. peacock down there named Michio. Yes. Love Michio Pablo. Who we were planning on bringing down a female one, but we couldn't find one. People actually dropped off animals at Tent City. Yeah. And just the guinea pigs them. were like the Full biggest round. one. They just brought yeah. them there with three guinea yes. pigs in a cage and said, "Here, we don't want them anymore." And the the, the people said that the first group of people there that they could think to bring them to was Michael and Marilyn because they had so many animals already. Glad they got them all out. Much tossed at the end. Someone showed up after we left and took some of the chickens to Vermont. And we got information about that when we were at the conference in DC. I was really surprised. (laughs) Um, Who were some of your favorite uh, guests on your radio show? And what did they talk about? Um, Favorite? Well, we could start off with most unique, which would be Honey LeBronx. (laughs) Um, I actually did a, a story on Chasing New, they, Chasing New Jersey did a story on me being the youngest radio host, and that, that was my answer then, and still is most unique guest ever. Um, she's a, I can't even think of the word. Um, vegan drag queen? 
Yeah, yeah Vegan mm-hmm. Dry Queen, who does a YouTube uh, cooking show. So that was pretty, that was an interesting interview. Um, yeah. uh, as far as favorite, I, we've done so many. I think we ended on episode 120 something. Yeah, we we lost count. It actually got hard numbering the YouTube videos because we couldn't remember which one was which, and they weren't even posted in the right order sometimes. So I don't know if I can pick a favorite just because I've met so many people through it. But it was a lot of fun. Uh, definitely a lot of cool people. Yes. So your uh, radio show is available on YouTube? Um, like yes. Kind of if you go on YouTube and search the Kevin Storm Show. Oh, okay. There's still quite a few missing, but there's probably close to 100 on there. Okay. I just want to say you're extraordinary. Thank you. You're a fine job, but what you're doing for the world is fantastic. Um, Thank you. And from such a young age, you know, because I mean, no matter at what age, but the fact you're doing it at such a young age, you will make a difference in the world. And it's all for all the animals and people, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You, you are an amazing person, and I just admire you. I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. You, you are an inspiration. Thank you. And I wanted to ask you when you um, did leaf footing at circuses. What kind of reaction did you get from the people going into the circus? Some positive reactions, a lot of really negative ones. Mm-hmm. I remember one time we were in Philly, and I was probably 10 at the time. Uh, we walked by this one person that had a horse-drawn carriage, and they were, uh, like, I guess the driver, you could say. And we walked past, and they, like, spit at us. That, oh. Was, oh. that was probably the harshest. Um, but my mom always brings this up in conversation if we're talking about leafleting or something like that. My mom said, uh, I, I don't remember doing this, but she, uh, she does. Um, I was at a protest once, also in Philly, and I was talking to this one person, um, and they went and said something about how they eat horse meat. And uh, I don't remember what you, you yeah. always tell me I said something to him, but I can't remember. Oh, you looked up at him, and he had a daughter um, who was close to your age, and he just he looked up at this giant man and said, you should be ashamed of yourself talking like that in front of your child. That was cute. <laughs> I don't remember doing it, but she, she, she constantly reminds me. Right. <laughs> Any more? Did you take uh, uh, call-ins on your radio show? Um, we did a couple times. It was never really very successful, except for the, the what did we end up calling it? The... It wasn't a th- we came up for some re- a name for telephone. We came up with something. because um, oh, we had Jumpin' Jamie on. For we we tried to do a, a show that, to attempt to save my show, where we peop- we had people uh, call in, and uh, my dad called in, my nana called in. <laughs> and, and <laughs> I don't remember who else, but the, we I think we got at least six people. Um, John's mom called in, didn't she? Yeah. Yes. That was really cool. And then three other people. We had one person. I guess it was kind of a prank call, and I, oh. I was really surprised when we got that. That wasn't during the telethon, though. Um, somebody called in and had this really like weird fake voice. Like you could tell it was fake. And this other person in the background doing like a young girl voice, trying to pass off as the daughter. And he asked me if there was any video games that were good for somebody that wanted to like shoot ponies or whatever. And I didn't know how to react, <laughs> but I tried to seem like I like wasn't completely stunned at the question. So my best reference was this one game that you can get like a pony mask or whatever. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know how to answer it, but I tried to come up with something. It was, it was confusing. I had no idea how to react. And they tried to call back again, but my mom didn't put the call through. Yeah. Um, she ended up being the, the directory at the last station we were with. Because yeah. she was too nervous to co-host. No. Yeah, co-host, yes. Yeah. So what, kind of, what kind of things do you say at school you know, to, to other kids or at the cafeteria, for example, as far as um, vegan options at the cafeteria or asking other students to look into eating more vegan food? How do, you, how do you approach other students? As far as how I approach them, I try to do it subtly uh, so that they're not, it doesn't seem like I'm like jumping down their throat with the idea mm-hmm. of going vegan. Um, I've had a couple of my friends, uh, when I had something uh, especially vegan, like a, a vegan food is anything that doesn't have animal products in it. So if I had an apple, that's still technically vegan food. Uh, like if I would bring in a sandwich that had day cheese and tofurkey on it. Uh, I had a couple of friends of mine 
ask if they could try it. So I would rip off a piece of it and let them try it, and they really liked it. And I was like, yeah, you should go to Acme and buy some of this for yourself so you can make it on your sandwiches. And they were like, okay, I might do that. And I know one of my friends at school uh, went vegetarian because of me, and that, scene, that was really cool. I remember him telling me uh, about him having tofurkey for the first time on Thanksgiving, and he loved it. And that was really cool because I can actually tell him, or if I'd have realized it at the time, I could have told him that uh, I'm, for some reason, I got lucky and I'm one of the special ones that can call Seth Tibbet, the founder of Tofurkey, yeah. a friend. Yeah. Um, he, he's more or less the reason I was able to go to the AR conference in LA. So that was really cool. And not the second time so much, but also yeah. felt really, some yeah, I was for um, an award also. I went to LA twice in one year and both times I didn't think I was going to. When I found out that the conference was in LA, the first time we went, I was like, there's no way we're gonna make it there. We're just gonna have to skip a year. And then it's the fact that we actually got to go and then meet the person who was the, almost the reason behind us being able to was a great experience, even if there was some drama that I don't wanna talk about that <laughs> happened there. Um, and then we got this email and they abruptly told us that we were flying out to Calabasas, California on December 2nd for a, the Paul McCartney Young Veg Advocate Award and they paid for the flight and that was a really cool experience there. It was really nice. It was 60 there when it was two in New Jersey. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, got to wear shorts and a t-shirt when I would have been wearing three coats and <laughs> three layers of sweatpants at home. So that was really fun. Drank a lot of Starbucks while we were there too. <laughs> But that was for an award that I didn't think I would win. And I still haven't gotten the reprinted copy because they made a typo and printed two of the same award for the person that was there. But I still have it framed in my room. So that was pretty cool. And I did, But I didn't get to meet Paul McCartney. I got to meet Russell Simmons and Sierra McCormick, though. So that was really cool. And James Cameron's wife. And, yeah, and James Cameron's wife. And one of the head chefs for Gardein. That was even cooler. Yeah. And Simone Reyes. Oh, yeah. With the puppy. Any more questions? What, what about the cafeteria school? Oh, um, I, they don't really have any vegan options at my school except for like really sugary canned fruits. Yeah. I mean, even the salad, the drench ranch dressing on there. Have you tried to approach them? Honestly, my, my school district isn't one of the most, uh, like, uh, yeah, open-minded or uh, willing to adapt type townships. Um, so I could try to talk to them, but I, I doubt heavily that just one person going to them would change their opinions. Yes? Clint wants to know what your favorite food is. Ah. Favorite food? Um, Cereal. <laughs> probably... I don't know. I get that question a lot, and I never know how to answer it, because I eat, like, so many different types of vegan foods. Um, probably... You can give us your top five. The most, the most cliche answer would be vegan pizza. That's, that's the most obvious and generic answer. Um, I guess maybe the Gardein fishless fillets, those are really good. I've only ever had them t three times. Once, they could finally got them at shop right near us. Uh, stop the conference shop. in DC, uh, stop and shop. The conference in DC, and then the award that I got in LA. So, yeah. Is there a homemade class in your school? Um, I'm not sure if there's one in the high school that I'm going to. I'm not going to my township high school. I'm going to uh, Burlington County Institute of Technology. Eh, Burlington County Institute of Technology, and I'm mostly going for like uh, computer engineering degrees and stuff like that. So. They might have one that I can pick as a club. Yeah, uh, probably they have schools for I would chefs so. and things. Yeah, yeah. I know they had some. Yeah. They had something along the lines of. So they might be open to. Uh, yeah. Probably. What is this conference you mentioned that you went to? Uh, the animal rights conference. I'm pretty sure that's just the. Yeah. yeah, and they have one in D.C. and then one in L.A. and they alternate between years. I, I think, right? Yeah, we just or is it see. every other every switch? They go back and forth. Um, and it's it's a really cool event to go to. There's thousands of people. Um, the one we were just at, uh, 1,600 people were there, and that was just for full registrations. 
not counting all the people that signed up for uh, just the banquet or a one-day registration or just a visitor's pass for like an hour. That was just people that paid for the full conference. And the fact that I've been able to go to three of them after thinking I was probably only going to go to one is crazy because that's allowed me to meet a lot of people that I've had on the show. We actually, the first conference that we went to, um, not not even six months after the show started, we met two fans of mine from Brazil. They came up to my mom at the breakfast the first day of the conference and said, oh, you're Kevin Storm's mom. And they asked where I was and she just pointed at me. And while I'm eating, these two people come over and they, they have these big smiles on their face and like, ooh, it's Kevin Storm, Kevin Storm. And I, was, I didn't know how to react because it was the first time I'd ever met somebody that listened to my show that was from farther than a state with, or a location in another state within an hour of driving. So the fact that these people were in Brazil, a whole other continent, was crazy to me. That my show was that far globally after less than six months. And now I can actually say that my show did go global. We've got friends and probably, we've got fans in probably 30 countries, yeah. something like that. Um, we have one friend, oh, we have one fan in uh, South Africa, uh, Poland, Serbia, South, uh, France. South of France, a whole bunch of people all over the world. And it's crazy to think that at the age of 14, I have something that affected the world in a positive way that went global. And it was as, as stressful it, as it was. I can look back on it now that it's over and realize that I did something to posit positively affect the movement. Would you like to have your show again in the future? Um, we are actually thinking of putting up a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter campaign to try to get some money together to get some equipment for an internet podcast, which wouldn't have to end until it got to the point where it was too much work for us. Because we got offered a spot on a podcast website that would be basically free for us to do our show. And it would have a much looser format because it wouldn't have all the restrictions of radio rules, I guess you could say. Anymore? So you, you were offered it, but you need the funding, or it's that's yes. just something different? Uh, no, we were offered the spot on the website, but we don't have the money for all the necessary equipment. We'll get it. Hopefully. Any more questions? No? Okay. What equipment do you need? Um, probably two mics, two headsets. My mom wants to get me a desktop, a desk, desktop computer uh, with a monitor and more than likely an audio mixer and a phone for taking guest calls. So somebody suggested uh, Bruce actually uh, from Bruce and Hobbs podcast suggested starting a Kickstarter campaign um, for I think he said three thousand and that would be uh, basically guaranteed coverage for the minimum amount of equipment. So it's not going to be easy, but it'll happen. Would you consider being a radio host as a career? Um, if I could make it into a career, I would love to do that for money because it was a lot of fun and it was a good way to, to meet new people, but it, it sucked having to pay every week. <laughs> that wasn't fun. Any more questions? Well, uh, again, thank you all for coming out to hear me talk or more or less ramble. Um, <laughs> and thank you, uh, Lorraine and Steve, for having me as a speaker. Thank <laughs> you.